Shalom, brothers and sisters. I thought I'd, I'd just touch on Israel again from personal experience. There's a lot. I can, I can talk on this for hours and from various aspects. The good, the bad, the ugly, the interesting, the hilarious, the weird, the confusing. But I want to touch just shortly today on why Israel is special and important. I mean, there are even Orthodox Jews that are against Israel, that stand against Zionism, the wanting of a land that would stand with Israel's enemies. <clears throat> that is how deep the confusion and the, the evil has transpired. So let me give you my 10 cents. Um, where I grew up in South Africa, there are a lot of mines. Um, I happen to be back there again now. The Lord has brought us back to this area for His purposes. And um, those mines and that pollution affected my sinuses. So my whole life, I've had sinus issues before any of the other interesting issues arrived later on. <laughs> but um, sinuses have been a thing since when I was small because of that. So, I mean, at one stage when I was trying to preach to my brother many, many years ago when I was really young, he would say to me, don't talk to me about God or healing or anything. I can search you at any time and find a handkerchief yeah, in your pocket ready to go. So there's that. And I said, well, that doesn't mean anything. But fact of the matter is that's how much part of my life it is because of that. Now, the interesting thing was when I flew to Israel to go and do my practical of my studies to be a pastor, we did a practical component. My practical component, God took me to Israel. So I flew to Israel and I spent more than three months there. And just in ministry and doing things for God and learning and writing my research paper and such. <clears throat> when I landed, when I took off in South Africa, my nose is permanently clogged. I mean, like 80% on the one side and about 70 on the other side. Hence, hanky always in my pocket. Um, I've even had the operation where they break and clear the sinuses. That kept me clear and open for about a week and then back to normal. So, I took off in South Africa as per normal. When I landed in Israel, and again, lots I can tell you about this. God actually arranged for me to be in the cockpit of the Boeing with the pilots coming in so that I could see the land of Israel before me. The whole land of Israel from the air through the cockpit, not in the back with the passengers. It was incredible. But anyway, side note. When we touched down in Israel and I said goodbye to the pilots and I got out of the plane and my feet touched to the ground of the Holy Land. <clears throat> Fact, not lying to you. Both opened up 100%. I could take my hanky and drop it in the dustbin because I never used it once while I was in Israel. Not once. I could breathe like I've never breathed before through my nose. Sinuses gone. Healed. Just from arriving there with that air in the land of Israel. That was my first wow moment. Never mind anything else. Never mind how beautiful it was seeing it from the air. Just that personal touch on me from God touching down in Israel, walking in Israel, going to the exact harbor where Jonah fled from God, from his calling to go to Nineveh. I stood there where he fled and the Bible came alive. I felt Jonah right there getting ready to flee. I could see what he saw. I could read the book and I could experience it real time because I was there. The house where Peter had his dream, where the carpet came down. I saw the roof of that house. I've seen it. I could see it and read it. And it was alive. Going to Jerusalem for the first time and seeing the old city, walking through those gates, those old gates, touching those walls and thinking Jesus was here. He walked here, going to the wall, the hotel, and praying there, and seeing all these people lost, and my heart breaking for them and weeping for them with Jesus, that they are not seeing their Messiah. Just being there and knowing this is His. It belongs to God. Going up the Mount of Olives, where He went often to pray, going to the actual grove. It's still there. 
thousands of years old trees and praying there and seeing those trees and thinking by one of these ancient gnoll trees, my Lord and my God prayed often and before the crucifixion where he was arrested here, here on the Mount of Olives, looking down over Jerusalem at the east gate that he knows he's going to enter through at the end. He sees it all. How his heart wept for them. I felt that grief. It was alive. It was real for me. There where I stood, he left to heaven. And the angel said, why are you standing here looking up in the same way he will return as he left? That same place he will come back in the end of the seven years, put his feet down and the mountains will split. I stood there. It's real. I stood at his tomb with the stone rolled away. I've put my fingers in the cracks from the earthquake that the Bible talks about that took place all over that area. I have seen that empty tomb. It is empty because he is alive. I've run my hands through those cracks that took place back then. And I felt part of all of it. It is amazing. I have stood at the sea of Galilee and looked out on it as if an ocean and just imagined him walking along the shore, calling his disciples to follow him the same way he called me. But here where he started. Israel belongs to God. It is a place I cannot wait for all of you to experience. And you are fortunate because you are being so close to the rapture. When you see it, we'll be seeing it with Yeshua. And he will take you and show you everything himself. Not secondhand like I did, which was already powerful, but with him actually walking with you. I, I experienced God with me in Israel. I spent the night on the Mount of Olives praying over Jerusalem and I could feel Jesus with me. Could feel his feelings as we prayed over Jerusalem. And soon we can stand with him hand in hand. And see and experience all these things. Regardless of what the world and darkness and evil is trying to sell you. Israel belongs to God eternally. It is his. There God destroyed all of our bondages. Broke all of our chains. Changed everything. We are his. And we stand for the things that he loves. And he loves Israel. It is his and will always be regardless of how evil stands against it. So pray for Israel. And pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Shalom.